Hello and welcome back. This is Aditi Gupta. I believe you remember all from the previous video about the parts of the plant, roots, fruit, flowers, and one of the process of reproduction which you have learned through vegetative parts. Now here it comes to the next process of reproduction which is through seeds. Yeah, reproduction through seeds. How uh, reproduction will happen through seeds? Nature is so amazing and full of puzzles. Look at this, how beautifully the seed will turn into the whole plant within 25 days. And how amazingly it is happening and it is looking so soothing and beautiful. Just have a look with, with the whole process. Do you know what makes the earth so beautiful? Which part of the plant makes the earth so, so beautiful? Of course, these flowers, bright color flowers. Actually, not every plant bears flowers. Some of the plants exist which doesn't bear flowers. Yeah, actually, some of the plants also exist which doesn't bear, bear flowers. But apart from that, there are lots of plants which bear flowers. And, and such plants which bear flowers are known as flowering plants. So now, what are these flowers? Let's discuss some of the features of flowers. First one is that flowers are the most colorful part of the plant. I have told you already that flower is the colorful part of the plant. You have seen flowers in variety of colors. Sometimes you have seen in violet, red, pink, yellow. So the flowers exist in variety of colors. Okay, and next thing is flowers are also known as reproductive part because it carries reproductive organs. Now you will might get confused what are reproductive organs actually what is there as a reproductive organ which makes the flowers a reproductive part. So we will discuss the whole thing in this video about what are the reproductive organs of the flowers and what makes the reproductive part. You might remember that I have already told you that flowers turns into fruits. Birds turns into flowers and flowers turns into fruits which bear seed inside. And these all things collectively will be the part of the whole reproduction process. How these seeds will ultimately will be the uh, part of the process of the whole life cycle of the plants. How it takes the part in reproduction. This all thing will you will be clear in this whole video. Now with this, there is an important thing which you need to know about the flowers that is of the main function of the flowers. What are the main functions of the flowers? It is, it helps in pollination, it helps in reproduction, it also responsible for the formation of fruits. I know till now these terms are not clear to you people but everything will be clear by the end of this video. So just watch everything carefully. While moving forward towards the whole process of reproduction, it is essential to understand the structure of flower. So if we will have a look of flower closely, so we can understand that flower can further divide it into four important parts that is sepal, petals, stamen and pistil. Just look at this uh, flowchart carefully which will make you clear about the reproductive parts also. First part is sepal, then petals and then male reproductive part and female reproductive part. Now sepals and petals are the part, other parts and then stamen and pistil. Stamen and pistil both are the reproductive part. Now stamen is the male reproductive part and pistil is the female reproductive part. How you can keep it remember like if you can see it carefully stamen and if you will split the word stamen into parts then you will get a word men in it m-e-n men and men is actually what men is male so you can keep it remembered by this also that stamen is male reproductive part and the rest pistol is will be the female reproductive part so just to keep you people remember you can split the word stamen and when you will get men then which will make you people remember that stamen is the male reproductive part. Now you can see that yellow boxes which further divide stamen and pistil into another parts that is stamen can particularly uh, have a part 
and third and filaments and pistil further divided into stigma style and ovary now understand it more clearly with this picture but the best thing we can learn it with the real flower so just go and grab a hibiscus flower why i'm saying only hibiscus flower because each and every part will be clear clearly visible in that flower okay so just take a hibiscus flower and look at this picture also carefully you will get to understand all the parts very very carefully and clearly okay so here number one is ovary just uh, look at that picture that number one is ovary then or the a pipe like structures arising from that ovary is number two which is known as style and the topmost part of that style is that solen part is a stigma okay so one two and three all three collectively in the previously i have already told you that stigma style and ovary collectively form pistil and similarly here it is also visible that one two three parts collectively forming the fourth part and that fourth part is pistil okay now similarly with fifth and sixth part fifth part is anther that solen part orange color part is uh, anther and sixth part is filament filament is also a stick like structure it's like a thread like structure which is anther which is filament sorry so five and six collectively form stamen or a male reproductive part which you have already seen in the flow chart now rest are the parts are that eighth number part is which is the pink part or red part is petals that green part ninth one is sepals and then ovule and then 11th one is receptacle if you will observe it in a original flower then it will be more clear to you people that how these sepals you have seen just below that colorful part you have seen some leaves like structure arise uh, which which is green color which is of green color that green color part is sepals it is it looks like a petal but it is of green color that is sepal and that colorful part is that all the flowers ex, uh, contain that all the colorful parts which is uh, which is petal so basically these these sepals protects the bud to get damaged okay before it blooms into the flower before the bud blooms into the flower it protected by the sepals these green like structures okay then after when it gets bloomed these all petals come out petals means all the colorful parts in from inside this sepal comes out and you will get the brightly colorful flowers in your hand okay so that colorful part of the flower are petals that's why our flowers look beautiful and attractive and now here it comes the first fun function it is attractive that's why insects gets attracted towards it okay so this beautiful part is responsible for the attraction of insect towards the plant towards the flower okay for the process of pollination okay i have introduced that term earlier about the pollination now first observe stamen and pistil carefully stamen further can be divided into um, first one is anther that fifth point it's it's look like a bag like structure bag like head okay which contains pollen grains in it another thing is filament it is a thick oh, sorry thin stalk it's a thin stalk which holds the stem in to the flower okay so the most important thing about stem in that it stores pollen grains which further helps in the process of pollination and another part is pistil pistil is the female reproductive part which further consists of ovary style and stigma okay. o ovary is the sac solen part of this pistil which is uh, which also contains ovules in it okay some small structure also there which is or which is all which is known as ovules next is style that arise just above the ovary 
and uh, it is a pipe like structure which arises above the ovary which ends to the top part which is known as stigma okay so which where the style get ends fine so this collectively forms pistil and last in large part 11th number is receptacle which further move in the form of pedicel which uh, attach the flower to the stalk of the stem okay so this is all about the parts of the flower now let's understand how this whole reproduction takes place step by step so when plants get mature or become adults then it produce flowers and then flowers contains anther and pistil as a female and male reproductive parts some have only the anthers or have only the pistil and so on and pollen grains which i told you to keep it remember are present in anther and next you have pistil with anther which is having three parts stigma style and ovary you know what happens is pollen grains are generally transferred to the stigma to make seeds and fruit for the uh, to make seeds and fruits for the so now here things are getting clear how reproductive organs can take parts in transferring the reproductive things to the female reproductive parts called ovary okay so through this stigma all the things reach to the ovary and then further reproduction takes place and now here the stems come pollination so the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to stigma is called pollination now you understood that what is pollination now this pollen grain is transferring to the stigma means female reproductive organ from the male reproductive organ the whole process of transferring from male to female is called pollination okay now this process can happen within the same flower also and it can happen between two different flowers also these pollen grains can transfer from one anther to the same stigma and this can be transferred from the same the this can be transferred from the anther of one flower to the different flower of stigma now do you know how it transfer from one one flower to another flower so sometimes we have seen honey bees and butterfly buzzing next to our flowers we think that they are usually there to eat sweet nectar but but what they are doing is picking up the pollen from the anther and then these grains got stick to their bodies and when they reach to the another flowers then uh, this is how they transfer these pollen grains from their body to that uh, to the stigma of that another flower this is the whole process happen this is called as pollination now after the whole process of this uh, transferring from of pollen to the over, to the stigma of ovary uh, what happened with this pollen that pollen transfer then reach to the ovary through style and there this pollen get fused with the ovary to form new fruit and there this pollen fused with the ovary to complete the process of fertilization yes the the process of fertilization is when the pollen fused with the ovary then what happens that ovary swells up and changes into fruits and ovules inside that ovary changes into seeds okay so you have to keep it in mind that ovary always turns into fruit and ovule turns into seeds this is the whole process of fertilization and with the end of this fertilization all petals and stamens fall falls off and the plants will left with the fruit and seed now a new baby plant can be born by the repeating of this whole process you can see that how this plant life cycle can repeat its again by seed planting its in then germination takes place then it sprouts into the new seedlings and then this becomes a new plant which again bears the flowers 
then flower starts fruits which contain seeds inside then they that fruits can be eatable part then fruits can be eaten by us and then again these seeds will remain and then the pros the whole process will repeats again and again to continue its life cycle now you must have understood that how these seeds are forming and again how it is taking part in the whole process of plant this is how the whole reproduction takes place with seeds so i think you must have understood about this process also and for now we will continue further in our next video till then watch it thoroughly stay tuned and stay safe